everybody. Welcome to the Lab 207 webcast. I thank you for joining us again. My name is Vance Kite, and as you can see from our screen today, we're going to be talking about acids and bases. So, like always, I like to give you the objectives before we get going so you kind of know what we're driving at. So, first of all, there are four things we're going to talk about today. The first one is, by the end, you should be able to differentiate between hydroxide and hydronium ions. Tell me how they're different from each other. You need to be able to compare and contrast the actions of acids and bases, explain the pH scale, and describe the function of buffers. So before you really start talking about acids and bases, the first thing that you need to understand is ions. Now, before we get into what an ion is, there is something very basic that I need you to remember. When an atom breaks up, sometimes it gains an electron or loses an electron forming an ion. An ion is just an atom that has a positive or negative charge. There are two types of ions. You have got cations, forgive my writing, which are positive, and you have got anions, which are negatively charged. Now the easiest way to remember this is by remembering the term cat P. I always remember cations are positive, so cat P, just something to keep in the back of your head. Now, for today, there are only two types of ions that we are concerned with. We are concerned with the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. When water breaks up, it forms one of these two. So let's talk about how that happens real quick. Um, in our last video, we talked a little bit about hydrogen bonding between water molecules. They're always forming these weak bonds between the negative oxygen and the positive hydrogen. Now, when these weak bonds break, sometimes our poor little hydrogen gets left behind. So when that happens, we get two different atoms that result. The first one is known as the hydronium ion. This guy gets the extra hydrogen. You can see him hanging out there. The formula is H. 3O. And since we got this extra hydrogen who is positive, hydronium ions have got a positive charge. Now, for the purpose of our discussion, hydronium ions are just going to be known as H+. The other guy who unfortunately lost his little hydrogen is known as the hydroxide ion. You can see his missing hydrogen space right there. And since he is missing that positive hydrogen, he has got a negative charge. So I want you to remember these guys. Hydronium is positive H3O. Hydroxide is negative OH minus. So with that in mind, let's truck on a little bit and talk about acids versus bases. Now this is probably a review from your chemistry class or your basic bio class, but let's just make sure that we're all on the same page. So first thing is an acid is anything that adds H plus to a solution. All right, And bases are anything that reduce H plus concentration. Now in a normal solution, H plus and OH minus are in balance with each other. There are usually as many H pluses as there are OH minuses. Now, if you add something to that solution and it makes this H plus go up, then that thing is an acid. If you add something that causes the OH to go down, then it is a base. Now, you see right here, there are two ways the bases reduce the H plus concentration. The first one is to directly hook up with that H plus. A good example of this is ammonia which is NH3. If you put NH3 into a solution, it will combine with that H plus and give you ammonium ion, which is NH4 plus. So it effectively pulled this hydrogen right here out of the solution and made our solution less acidic. The other way it can do this is by dissociation. So let's take sodium hydroxide. If that's put into water, this is going to break up into Na plus sodium and again our hydroxide ion. Now our hydroxide ion we know he is negative and he likes to become water. So our OH minus here he is going to combine with any H pluses that are floating around and they will form harmless water. So as a quick recap just remember these couple things. Acidic solutions have more H plus than OH minus and basic solutions are the exact opposite. So let's go ahead and talk about how we make some measurements about acidity or basicness. That is using the pH scale. Now, a couple things to remember about the pH scale. Um, it is a logarithmic scale. We will get back to what that means in just a second, but essentially it expresses a relationship between the number of H plus and OH or hydroxide, hydroxide and hydronium ions. In any solution, the total of number of hydroniums and hydroxides will be 10 to the negative 14th total. So that means in a neutral pH of 7, in a solution that has a neutral pH of 7, you have got 10 to the negative 7th hydronium 
10 to the negative 7th hydroxide. They are even and in balance with one another. Now, you all probably remember your pH scale goes from 1 all the way up to 14. If you are down on this end, you have an acid. And if you're all the way up on this end, you have got a base. Now, I said we we're going to talk about the fact that this is logarithmic in a second. Logarithmic means that for each jump, you're increasing by a factor of 10. So this means that a 1 is 10 times more acidic than a 2. A 2 is 10 times more acidic than a 3. Now, here's where things get a little crazy. Let's say we're going to talk about the relationship between a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4. The 1, we said, is 10 times more acidic than a 2. But if we want to compare the 1 and the 3, we got to do a little multiplication. The 1 is 10 times 10 more acidic than the 3, which gives us 100 times more acidic. If we are comparing the 1 and the 4, the 1 is 10 times 10 times 10 more acidic than the 4. So that means that the 1 is a thousand times more acidic than the 4. And this can be applied going up or down the scale either way. So just remember logarithmic means you are changing by power of 10. And when comparing, you are going to multiply. Our final topic, for, well, sorry, we're going to look at the pH scale real quick. Forgot about that. Um, this is just a basic pH scale. It gives you some reference points. Now, the thing that I want you to recognize on this is using a pH scale, you can always figure out how much H plus and OH minus there is. So, for example, let's take boric acid. It has a pH of 5. That means that there are 10 to the negative fifth H plus ions in that solution. Since we've always got to make 14, that means that the rest of the solution has got 10 to the negative ninth OH minus in it. This can be applied going up, going down, just remember that you always got to make it to 14. So our final topic of the day is buffers. And this, as far as our body is concerned, is where the rubber hits the road. Um, our body fluids have to maintain a constant pH. If they change very much in any direction, we die. So our blood, for example, has to stay around 7.4 pH. If it goes up to 7.8 or down to 7.0, we die. So what a buffer is, is it's an acid-base pair that stabilizes the pH of a solution. Let's talk about how that happens. So one of the most common buffering systems in our body is the carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer system. The equation for this system looks like this. H2CO3, which is carbonic acid, goes through a reversible reaction that forms bicarbonate ion and H plus ion. So your body can run this reaction going in both directions. We see right here that it is reversible. So let's say that your body is too acidic, which means that the pH is low and there is a lot of H plus hanging out. What your body needs to do is it needs to get rid of that H plus. So what's going to happen is these bicarbonate ions right here are going to pick up some of that H plus and take it out of the solution. Okay, so you take that H plus away and it's going to change the pH. Now, if we need to go in the other direction and your blood is basic, which means that your pH is high and you've got very little H plus running around, your body needs more, then in that case, this reaction is going to run in this direction where you have got your acid breaking up giving up this H plus ion to balance the pH of your blood. So remember, when your body needs acids, when it needs H plus, carbonic acid breaks down into bicarbonate and H plus. When your body is too acidic, then these two combine, forming carbonic acid. So thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial. I hope it helped out, and I will look forward to you joining us again on the Lab 207 webcast. Thank you.